This is the call to order of the New Bern Historic Preservation Commission. Can we have a roll call of commissioners, please? Certainly. Dr. Ruth Cox. Present. Tripp Urey. Here. James Bisbee. Here. George Brake. Here. Peggy Broadway. Here. Christian Evans. Here. Joseph Klotz. Here. Ellen Sheridan. Here. James O. Woods, Jr. Here. We have a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you. Can I call for a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes? So moved. moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, it is passed. Are there are no corrections to those minutes either? No? Okay. <clears throat> the historic preservation. Oh, oh, wait a minute. We need to uh, actually have a motion to uh, and a second to approve the minutes. To approve the minutes, okay. Move to approve. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All of those in favor, say aye. 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 All of those uh, against, hearing none, it is approved. So there's two sets of minutes in front of you. Is that for both of them, or is that just for the first one, August 21st, 2019? For both of them. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. The Historic Preservation Commission is a public commission appointed by the City of New Bern's Board of Aldermen. It is responsible for preserving and safeguarding New Bern's locally designated historic districts, downtown and Riverside, based on U.S. Department of Interior standards, state statutes, city ordinances, and New Bern's historic guidelines. Two of the major tasks of the HPC include approving applications for a certificate of appropriateness and preventing demolition of historic structures due to neglect. The HPC holds a quasi-judicial hearing on an application for a certificate of appropriateness. The Commission hears sworn testimony and evidence provided by the applicant by parties who receive notice of the hearing and by others who can justify that they have relevant evidence and are directly affected by the application. The Commission cannot consider comments based on personal likes or dislikes, hearsay, or personal opinion that cannot be directly related to a specific historic guideline. Likewise, commissioners shall refrain from stating personal opinions, personal likes or dislikes, or hearsay during a hearing. The Commission's decision on an application is based solely on testimony and evidence presented at a hearing that directly, directly relates to the historic guidelines. Can you swear in any presenters that want to speak today? Certainly. Um, if anyone is going to be speaking at all this evening, or you think you might speak at all this evening, please come forward. We'll start again. Okay. And just because you're sworn in doesn't mean you have to speak. So if you feel like you just may speak, come on forward in. Okay. So please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth to the best of your knowledge? I do. All right. And then please sign in here with your name. Here is a summary of how we will generally conduct a hearing on a COA application. The HBC administrator provides an overview of the application, 
the applicant or their representative presents the application, proponents and opponents who received notice of the hearing can present evidence. Rebuttal is allowed by the applicant and by proponents and opponents who received notice. Others who can justify that they have relevant information and will be directly affected can present evidence. The HBC administrator presents the staff's findings and recommendations. The applicant or the representative has an opportunity to make final com comments on their application. Commissioners discuss the evidence and may ask for clarification from the applicant or their representative. The chairman calls for a motion to approve or deny the application with stated finding of fact. The motion is discussed by the commission. The chairman calls for a vote on the motion by the commission. A COA can be approved, approved with conditions, or denied. So let us go to the first application on our list for today. Okay, today we have no old business, so our first item is new business. That's uh, for 610 New Street to include construction of a new garden shed in the tertiary ABC. Madam Re Chairman, I received notice for that property. Okay. So I believe I have to be recused. You would if you received notice. <laughs> I move that Commissioner Allen Sherry be recused from 610 New Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, we will let you have a seat in the audience. Thank you, Madam Chairman. You are welcome. Thank you for letting us know. Okay, so we're going to look at the application here. Uh, we can see at the top the applicant has paid the fees in the upper left, um, and they filled in the information as required. And signed the bottom, signed and dated the bottom. Uh, both applicants. Uh, this is the uh, front of the house, uh, and the application is to add, as I mentioned, add a shed in the backyard. This is just for context. So this shows the an aerial, black and white aerial of the property, and the property is outlined in white. Uh, you can see the the backyard is uh, rather long and skinny. Here is a parcel map, uh, which even includes some of the dimensions. The parcel, of course, highlighted in pink. Then uh, the parcel is drawn in the upper, upper portion of this drawing here, uh, now turned sideways, um, and showing the shed at the back on the right-hand side, uh, eight feet from both side yards and, um, it's, oh, I'm sorry. 10 feet from the rear property line, which is in compliance. And then this is a sketch, uh, an early sketch of the shed. We'll see in a second a uh, more recent uh, depiction of the actual design of the shed. Uh, this is an old Sanborn map of the property. And so this is now the current design of the shed. Um, it's a 10 by 12 wooden shed, you know, shed with wood siding and uh, wood window and wood panel door, uh, two windows, two by three each. Uh, and the roof is now uh, variegated shingles. Uh, prior to this, it was a metal, was a metal roof. So they've changed, uh, in the past week or two weeks, they've changed the design to shingles. So this is some photographs. That's a, a photograph of what the door would be like, except that it would have a window in it like that. Uh, here's a photograph of a similar window. And then they've also provided some information that's required for uh, the building uh, permit for hurricane tie downs. And then this is their description of the work, which is basically the, uh, the bill uh, uh, describing the project and all the various optional parts, whether they're included or not. And then this is our uh, zoning and inspections uh, form for internal review. 
with the zoning uh, administrator as well as the uh, chief building inspector. The zoning, uh, this, the zoning administrator uh, says it meets the zoning and the building inspector, chief building inspector says a building permit is not needed if no dimension is greater than 12 feet. So 10 by 12 supposedly is not greater than 12 feet. So, uh, and then we have our recommendations when you're ready. Okay. Are there any conflicts of interest issues among the commissions other than the one person who's already noted that they received a letter? Any other conflicts of interest? Okay. Are there any issues around, about the application completeness? All right. So, would the applicant or their representative please present the application? Okay. If you have anything to add. Um, just that it's a wooden garden shed. We made some modifications after our first meeting with you guys um, regarding there was concern about the metal roof. Um, we brought some additional samples in and my husband met with you and they did not meet your criteria either and that's when we went with the shingle and then another suggestion was about going with a single pane um, window without the cross hatch so they agreed to do that and that was the modification as well as the horizontal siding um, there was a concern the first time when we were talking about about the double doors looking too much like a barn so we've managed to get the wooden door with the nine panes that matches the front door of the home as well. And everything was wood then, and then the variegated shingles. So I think those were the only concerns that we needed to um, address, which we provided the pictures for. Okay. Is there any testimony from any notified proponents of this project? Seeing none, is there any testimony from any notified opponents of this project. Seeing none, there's no rebuttal from either one of those. Um, is there anyone who wants to give evidence, um, who <clears throat> has relevant evidence and has standing regarding this project? Seeing none, sir, could we have the staff findings and recommendations? Okay, so this is for 610 New Street. Um, it is, uh, the house is the Hatch House from 1920, uh, which is a contributing structure in the historic district. Uh, the National Register inventory description for this uh, from 2003 is it's two stories, two bays wide, two bays deep, windows boarded up, hip roof porch, chamfered posts, asbestos siding, metal clad gable front roof, Cornice returns interior chimney in west roof slope. So this uh, project is to include construction of a new garden shed and the tertiary AVC. The staff submits the following historic guidelines as appropriate to this application. I'll make this a little bit bigger too, sorry. There we go. Uh, landscaping 2.4.5. Accessory structures 2.6.1 and 2.6.3, windows, doors, and openings 4.3.3, and contemporary materials 5.5.1, 5.5.2, 5.5.3, and 5.5.6. Statements of reason based on the information contained in the application in staff's judgment are the project is a new accessory structure located within the tertiary ABC. The project does not remove healthy, mature trees of desirable species. The proposed materials and components meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly, and the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include construction of a new garden shed in the tertiary ABC, citing the aforementioned guidelines. Thank you, sir. Is there any evidence or testimony from any state, city, or government body regarding this project? Seeing none, would the applicant like to make any final comments on the project? No. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
What discussion would we like to have about this project as members of the commission? Well, I'd certainly like to thank the applicant for taking into consideration some of the comments we talked about in design review, and I uh, think you've put together a very nice application. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody, any other comments? Okay, seeing none, I call for a motion regarding the, to approve or deny the COA. Madam Chairperson, I move that we find the application for a certificate of appropriateness for 610 New Street uh, to be <clears throat> not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinance, sections 15411 through 15429 and New Bern's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Landscaping, 2.4.5. Uh, excuse me. Uh, accessory structures, 2.6.1 and 2.6.3. Windows and doors, 4.3.3. And uh, contemporary materials, 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3 and 5.6. Findings of fact. The accessory structure is in the tertiary area of visual concern. The materials meet the guidelines, and it is not incongruous with the, with the historic district guidelines. A motion has been made to uh, second. Okay, <laughs> second the motion. I <laughs> said of it. Is there any other discussion that wants to be made about this? Hearing none. So I call for a vote. All of those in favor, say aye. Aye. All of those opposed, hearing none, the motion has been carried. I call for a motion to issue a COA. So moved. Second. Okay. All of those in favor, say aye. 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 All of those opposed, hearing none, the COA can be given. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for working with us. Do we have to have a motion for her to rejoin us? Yes, I think so, yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to allow Commissioner Ellen to re rejoin the board. Second. Second. Okay. All of those in favor, say aye. 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 All of those opposed? <coughs> None. Therefore, she's rejoined it's always us. good to have a parliamentary. Thank you. <laughs> One and all. Okay. okay. <laughs> Our next application is 520 Craven Street. Okay, this uh, application for 520 Craven Street is to include in the secondary AVC the addition of a new door, an extension of the existing pent roof over the new door, a new pilaster, extension of the deck and railing, modifications to the deck steps, relocation of the HVAC units onto the deck, and relocation of the electric feed to the HVAC units. So this is the application. A little bigger this time. Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry. And uh, they have paid fee. Uh, notated that with this. Uh, since it's not actually, the application was scanned before they paid the fee. So I've added uh, right below the word New Bern, there's now a whole new bar across there, which is a cut and paste from our database to uh, demonstrate that it says paid in full. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, they described and provided all the information as required and then have signed the application. And they being uh, the authorized representatives from Coastal Craftsmen for the owners. And you see that's been notarized. And this is the project you probably remember um, now I have to go a little bit smaller on this one because it's, uh, okay, there we go. Uh, this area of this house, uh, the street is um, to the left behind <coughs> the, the flag there. Uh, so this is the side yard and the backyard is to the right. Um, and to note in this existing photograph is the pent roof, uh, is this section right here. There's an existing doorway here, and there's an existing uh, window here. The existing window will be expanded to become a French door, 
the existing doorway will stay. The roof will then turn the corner and uh, cover over top of the, exist of the new doorway. And a new pilaster, similar to the ones here and here, will be added here on this wall over here underneath the pent roof. We'll see the illustration in a second. Uh, and then these two mechanical units will uh, be moved onto an expanded deck and behind the railing on that deck. And this deck will be expanded out from this uh, plane here where this uh, uh, edge board is right here. That edge board will be moved out to here and basically square off the deck. And they'll be adding some stairs you'll see in a second as well. So that's a basic summary based on the existing. So here's the sketch. So, uh, so now there's the pen that I was talking about before. It will remain, and they will extend it around the corner on this side as well. And then instead of a window, we now have a, a French door here, and then adding a new pilaster on this wall. Uh, and then uh, over here, this is the deck. Uh, that's now been extended out to the corner of the house uh, and the railing as well. Uh, and the mechanical units, you can't see them because they're behind the railing. No, uh, they're actually penciled in there somehow, but it's hard to see. But they're behind this railing area right here. And then they've, like I said, uh, moved that um, edge board out to this plane out here, extending the uh, deck out to there, and they've added these steps to the project. The existing steps uh, in this uh, scenario, they stay uh, just, the wh just where they are currently. And so now the uh, HVAC unit is gone here and, and the platform that it stood on. Um, I think that pretty much summarizes it there. Then uh, they've provided <coughs> a verbal description of every little bit of that project because that's their bid. And then they've also provided copies of the pages from the guidelines covering all the different uh, elements that they uh, described in their application. So um, it's quite a few, quite a few pages. Uh, they also provided a map showing where the house is located with re in relation to the floodplain, the floodplain being the area in blue. Uh, I enlarged it here on the next page, uh, except it's very small. So, so here we go. They are the orange blob there in the middle of the blue, so 520 Craven. Uh, so they're just on the edge of the floodplain. So that would probably be too large again. So these are uh, other photographs of the existing condition. In case you need them. They provided them. There's a different angle of the same area, more from the closer to the street or halfway to the street on the side of the house. Um, and then another photograph from the front of the house or of the front of the house, and you can just barely see to the right the electrical um, uh, electric meter here, and that's the corner where the the actual work at behind which the uh, work will happen. But this gives you an idea as to the style and uh, character of the existing structure. So a picture of the French door, an aerial of the project, and uh, right here is the area that we're talking about. You can see the, uh, the existing stairway doing that L shape here. Uh, the uh, deck is only this wide. It will be widened to this width here and lengthened, I believe, uh, to the corner. Yeah. So. And you can see it's still a pretty good distance away from the neighboring side yard, so there's none of those issues. 
Here's their sketch of that, the yellow area being the, uh, the new construction area, area of new construction. In addition to the, I'm sorry, in addition to the pent roof, which is then also this area here. But the yellow is the expanded deck area. So this is our internal form for zoning and building inspections. Uh, for zoning, uh, it meets uh, and it says proposed improvements um, do not uh, impact, there we go, setbacks. Uh, and then uh, the chief building inspector simply said it will require a building permit, of course. So, uh, and then these are our recommendations when you're ready. Thank you, sir. Do any of the members have any conflict of interest with this project? Seeing none, are there any issues on the application of completeness that anybody would like to speak to? Seeing none, would the applicant or their representative present the application? Last time, please state your name. That is Britt Warren, owner of Coastal Craftsman. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, presume, uh, I guess just if I have anything else to add, I do not. But I think the completeness of the description of the project um, explains what we're doing. Um, one thing that has uh, come up since our last meeting, we're doing the kitchen internal and uh, doing that project now. We have uh, found that we can relocate the electrical on the corner of the house to drop it, and we're going to put it underground, so which will also be an improvement on yes. the aesthetics of the house. So mm -hmm. uh, that's something the homeowner decided to move forward with. So, yeah, improving a lot of things all the way around there. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there any testimony from anybody who is a notified proponent of this project? Seeing none, is there any, any testimony from anyone who is an opponent of this project? Seeing none, there's no rebuttal area there. Is there anyone who would like to speak to any relevant evidence and has standing related to this project? Seeing none, sir, if you could give us your recommendation. Certainly. So, um, this is... Uh, 520 Craven Street, uh, owned by Tom and Ann Sporn. Uh, this is the Jer Jerkins Richards House. It was built in 1848 to 1849. It is a contributing structure in the historic district. And the National Register Inventory Description from 2003 describes it as two and a half stories, three bays wide, four bays deep, gable end roof, twin interior end chimneys, and two-story wing on south side. So 520 Craven Street, the project is to include in the secondary ABC the addition of a new door and extension of the ex existing pent roof over the new door and new pilaster, extension of the deck and railing, modifications to the deck steps. I guess that should be addition of some new deck steps as opposed to modifications. Relocation of HVAC units onto the deck and relocation of the electric feed to the HVAC units. So we submit the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. For utilities, it's 2.3.1, 2.3.2. Design principles, 3.1.2. Modifications, 3.2.1 and 3.2.2. Windows, doors, and openings, 4.3.2 and 4.3.3. For roofs, it's 4.5.4. For decks and patios, 4.6.2. For wood, 5.2.2. For metals, 5.3.2. Paint, 5.4.2. 5.4.3 and 5.4.9. For wood, it is 5. Oh, we already did wood, sorry. We did wood up there. So that was a repetition, sorry. So for statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are one, the project is. Modifications to a contributing structure within the secondary ABC. The proposed design, modifications, components, and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. 
The zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed the project and commented accordingly. And four, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include in the secondary ABC the addition of a new door, an extension of the existing pent roof over the new door, a new pilaster, extension of the deck and railing, addition of some new deck steps, <laughs> relocation of HVAC units onto the deck, and relocation of the electric feed to the HVAC units, citing the aforementioned guidelines. Thank you, sir. Is there any evidence or testimony from any state, city, or government person? Seeing none. Sir, do you have anything else you'd like to add about your application? At this time, I do not. Okay. So, we will have a discussion by the members. Any questions that any of you have of this project at this time? Comments, questions? By relocating the units to the deck, Mm -hmm. Does it allow room to service the units? Yes, yeah. There will be plenty of space there to, we verified that with the HVAC subcontractor before we started the Good. process. I have to thank them. This is the most complete application in the history of applications. <laughs> There's a lot there. That would be Chris, not me. <laughs> At design review, we mentioned something about the, pil the pilaster and the, the roof kind of meeting together, or did you even consider that or you just- Well, taking in the comments last time and just something I have not mentioned, we would bring that back off the corner as uh, Tripp had suggested and it would balance to match the existing one on the far right side. Okay. Yeah. Just as an observation, uh, under windows and doors 4.4.4 .4 seems to be appropriate. It just has to do with the, the new French doors being in proportion with the other uh, aspects the other of that side. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. So those are two things that we would need to add as conditions to the application. Mm -hmm. The change in the polyester and the roof and <coughs> the doors matching each other. Okay. Can I call for a motion regarding this application? Madam Chair, I move that we find an application for a certificate of appropriateness for 520 Craven Street to be in not congruence with New Bern Code of Ordinance Sections 15411 through 15429 and New Bern's historical guidelines based on the following specific guidelines, findings, and facts. Utilities 2.3.1 through 2.3.2. .2. Design principles 3.1.2. Modifications 3.2.1, 3.2.2. Windows, doors, and openings 4.3.2, 4.3.3, and 4.3.4. .4. Roofs 4.5.4, decks and patios 4.6.2, wood 5.2.2, metals 5.3.2, paint 5.4.2, 5.4.3, 5.4.9. Statement of reads uh, findings of fact that the project is is a modification to a contributing structure within the secondary ABC. Two, the proposed design modification components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Three, the zoning administrator and the chief building officers have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. Four, the project is not congruent with the guidelines. And with the that the pilaster and the roof is congruent with the other side. Second. And before we before we move to second, and the we the other uh, one was at the doors. Your four point four point four. Yeah, that those doors are matching. Four point four point four. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, yeah. you accept yeah. that? He, he added that. Oh, he added that. Okay. Yeah. He said four point three point four. Okay. Perfect. All right. So I think we have a second over here. Second. Okay, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, the application passes. Is there any other discussion at this point in time? Okay. I think we so need a... Who seconded that? I did. Jim. Chris. Chris. Jim. All right. We need another motion. Yes. So, we have a, so can we have a motion at this point in time? So, so moved. Second. Who did 
Okay, so all of those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Can I have a motion to issue a COA? Well, that, that was it. Nope. Oh, that was it. Okay, all right. All right, you're good. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Moving right along. So if we have 306 Newsweek. Three hundred six New Street to include installation of a new four-foot-high decorative metal fencing and gates in the primary ABC, new six-foot-high wood privacy fence in the tertiary ABC, and a concrete walkway in the secondary ABC. So here's our application, and it, bye guys, and it shows uh, they paid their fees on the upper left, filled out all the information plus attachments. Sign the form. And these are the attachments which describe um, the first section above the blue area is the description of the concrete walkway. The blue area is a description of the wood pri uh, privacy fence in the back. And then the green is the uh, uh, metal decorative fence on the front and the driveway. And they also have uh, an authorized representative uh, from Noble Design Build. So this is an aerial showing the site, uh, shaded around the site in orange. Um, and you might recognize it with the, uh, the county's um, building is to, uh, brick box building is to the left of the property and has a parking lot in the back of it. <clears throat> so this is a site plan uh, that they sketched up uh, with the uh, various elements shown in various colors. Let me get rid of that other bar at the top. There we go. Uh, and so the street is out front. Uh, the green represents the decorative uh, fence that was mentioned earlier and described earlier uh, at the bottom along the street and then up along the driveway to the house. And then at the end of the driveway, they're also doing some decorative fencing there with a gate as well. Then the uh, red hatched area is the concrete walkway uh, that they're proposing. And then the blue is the privacy fence the way it was originally proposed. They have a slight modification to that, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Um, this is a, a photograph of the change. Uh, the privacy fence shown in, in black on the left will, um, instead of going all the way along the side of the garage, will turn uh, just as it gets past the front edge of the uh, shed or garage. Um, I don't know if it's a shed or garage, but uh, doesn't have a driveway. So, um, oops, sorry, can't seem to get it to go faster. Uh, so now here on the on the left side, you can see in the red ink, it shows the, the uh, modified plan. Um, what's to note is that the gate is not actually shown, as shown, will not be as shown, or is not proposed as shown on this plan, except uh, because it's to be set back a couple feet from the corner. So um, then, uh, otherwise, it's still the same, and there's a sketch of the fence. Uh, so another, this was the earlier rendition when the fence was going all the way past the side of the garage. Just imagine now it's cutting back over right beside the side of the garage with a, a little gate there as well. So uh, this is their rendition of what it would look like with the new fence. Kind of schematic, but also shows a gate out front. Four feet high as the maximum that's allowed. Uh, back here, this gate uh, on the right is also decorative fence. It could be six feet, up to six feet, um, but they're proposing four feet, also with the gate. And, oh, and I'm sorry, and on the left, shows a kind of perspective view of how the walkway will look, except in concrete, not in black stripes. 
<laughs> they painted on the grass. <coughs> uh, so these are examples of some similar kinds of fences. Uh, the pr wood privacy fence would be similar to the one in the upper left, except obviously not old and kind of falling off. Um, the other ones are other examples of metal decorative fences. In the historic district. Uh, oh, this is. Uh, we're going to get there. Okay. They also submitted this photograph uh, showing the uh, detail at the corner where the driveway ends, and they will be putting the new fencing and gate at the end of the driveway, and then the pavement will be um, added to this corner here. So, oh wow. <laughs> Don't worry, it's there, it's there, there we go. So these are um, design sheets from, uh, for the fence. And let go this top one shows that the fence is to have uh, the rounded uh, tops called Vanderbilt style in this uh, company's uh, catalog. And it will also include on the right, you can see uh, a, a section at the bottom of the fence that has twice as many pickets. And then uh, they're also showing us the uh, style of the finials. And so that gives us a little uh, better idea. Um, what I would like to note is that the diagram with the circle does show that those pieces will be um, screwed into each other. Um, so that is something I would like to discuss. Uh, and I don't know exactly how the rest of all the pieces are connected together. And so then this is our um, internal form. It meets a zoning and it will not require a building permit. And then these are our recommendations. So the thing I would like to talk to uh, about the uh, the the screws and such is that uh, we do have a guideline that talks about metals being welded. So uh, now I'm pretty sure these, and I'm not even sure what the material is on this, I'm pretty sure they're going to be aluminum. So that isn't even a possibility for aluminum uh, that I know of. Uh, so we may have to have a discussion about all that. All right, so otherwise, when you're ready, I have recommendations. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Are there any conflicts of interest related to this project? Seeing none. Does anyone have any issues on the application completeness? Seeing none. Would the applicant or the representative like to come forward? Tell us your name, sir, please. Uh, Johnny Harrison with Noble Design Build. Okay. Uh, there, there are two uh, additional changes uh, that came about late that the homeowner has asked us to consider. Um, they both deal with the dec uh, decorative metal fencing, and that is um, on the front fencing at the perimeter of the front yard along the sidewalk. They would like to reduce the height of that fence from four feet as originally proposed to three feet, um, just so it's not quite as massive in the front yard. Um, and the decorative metal fence at the end of the driveway, which is in the secondary AVC, they would like to increase from four feet as originally proposed to a five foot height. So instead of four feet all around, three feet at the front yard, five feet high at the end of the driveway. Okay. Other than that, uh, I think Matt addressed the change to the privacy fence, but if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer that. 
Do you want to speak to this issue that was brought up about how the fence is going to be connected to, pieces are going to be connected to each other? Uh, to the extent that I can, I will. Um, it is a, it's a powder coated aluminum fence. Uh, that is the, the material. Um, it is, uh, it is not a welded system. Um, it is a, it uses a, as best I understand, a hidden fastener type system. So to my knowledge, I don't think there will be um, uh, a lot of visible fasteners, um, but it is not a, it's not a welded system. They are individual panels that are assembled on site. Okay. All right. So is there any testimony from any notified proponent of this project? Seeing none, is there any testimony from a notified opponent of this project? Seeing none, so there's no rebuttal. Does anyone wish to come forward with relevant evidence and has standing any information they'd like to share? Seeing none. Administrator, if you would like to give us y'all's findings. So um, this is 306 New Street, uh, owned by Scott and Sharon Speet. Uh, this is the F.T. Patterson House, built around 1892. There's a contributing structure in the historic district, and the National Register inventory description from 2003 is as follows. Two stories, L plan, two bays wide, front porch enclosed at right end, two-story pedimented bay window in left front bay, gabled roofs, interior chimney. So for 306 New Street, this project is to include installation of new three-foot high decorative metal fencing and gates in the primary ABC, new six-foot high wood privacy fence in the tertiary ABC. Uh, I guess we have to add a five-foot high decorative metal fencing at the end of, in the secondary mm -hmm. ABC, at the end of the driveway, and a concrete walkway in the secondary ABC. So staff submits the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. Fences and garden walls, 2.5.1, 2.5.2, 2.5.3. Metals, uh, for the purposes of our discussion, 5.3.3. Paint, 5.4.2, 5.4.3, and 5.4.9. Uh, and statements of reason, um, which uh, actually encapsulates another one of my questions. Uh, the one, the project is site work within the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. Two, except for not proposing to paint the wood fencing, uh, the proposed design, components, and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator, three, the zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly, and four, otherwise the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So we recommend the commission approve this application to include installation of new three foot and five foot high decorative metal fencing and gates in the primary and secondary ABC, new six foot high wood privacy fence in the tertiary ABC and a concrete walkway in the secondary ABC, citing the aforementioned guidelines with the potential for condition that the wood fencing be painted according to the guidelines. And you're not gonna say anything about the fencing and the welding? Uh, well, I think that, well, that could be another condition, that's correct. Okay. Do we have any evidence or testimony from any city, state, or government official? Seeing none. Does the applicant have any final comments that you would like to make at this time, sir? I have a question. Um, in lieu of painting a, uh, with a, a solid color opaque paint, uh, is it possible to stain or seal it with a deck sealer type material? That, that's yeah. acceptable. Okay. okay, we can we can take that under under uh, discussion when we get to our discussion part. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. And so we are at our discussion part now. So what discussion do we have around this project? Um, 
One, I was going to recommend that they use an opaque stain for that privacy fence that will stay there lots, lots longer. Um, and, and so that's guideline 5.4.4. Um, that, there, this little house is so hemmed in on every side that you know, and what is behind them, if you were standing and facing the front door behind them and to the left, you know, it's just kind of a big old mess. You know, it's trucks and a parking lot and everything else. So what they do to make it feel more residential right there is actually really important. Okay. Uh, John. Um, did you decide will you be hooking the fence into the brick wall or into a post? Uh, we, yes, it will be freestanding. Uh, sorry, it will not be attached to the existing uh, brick column that is there. It's actually out of plumb, so by necessity it will be freestanding. And did I understand you to say that it was going to be two feet high on the front? Three feet. Three feet. Three is okay. what we're requesting. And along the side also? Uh, yes. Side yard. Uh, yes, um, within the, the front yard, it will be uh, across the front of the house and parallel to the sidewalk, and then it will return back to the house parallel to the driveway. Um, everything in the front yard in the, in the primary ABC would be three feet high. Okay. Um, there's another section of decorative metal fence at the end of the driveway in the secondary ABC, um, and that's proposed to now be five feet high instead of four feet. Thank you. So I think I have all that, but do you have all that, ma'am? I do. Okay. So back to the issue of this fence and the bolts and the fact that it needs to be welded. What, what are we going to... Well, I think, I think there are two issues here. One is it says to use, and it's under that particular guideline, it talks about <clears throat> metals, but it talks about traditional metals, meaning wrought iron. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you go to... You know, under materials 5.5.2 and 3, it talks about using contemporary materials such as aluminum as a possibility that the application visually would be in keeping with historic process as opposed to necessarily building it. And, and with the, I believe with its uh, <coughs> aluminum and it snaps in, it's going to look like a well. So you won't, it, it, will, it will not be visible. I don't believe it'll be visible. To where you know you'll see the you'll see where it connects at. I mean, it, you won't see the actual connection. Okay. Uh, Johnny, is it fair to call the connections concealed, flush at least? To the extent, to to the okay. extent of uh, what I know, yes. Okay. Or, um, or flush at least. I mean, we may see the fastener head. Correct. But it'd be flush with the surface. Correct. Of attachment. Correct. It, it is designed to mimic the appearance of a welded system. That was a very good answer. <laughs> it's like he's been here before. <laughs> Just once or twice. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Any other discussion? Okay. So can I call for a motion then? Madam Chair, I move find an application for certificate of appropriateness for 306 New Street to be not congruent with New Bern's Code of Ordinance, Section 15411 through 15429, and New Bern's historical guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Fences and walls 2.5.1 through 2.5.3. Metals 5.3.3. Painting. 5.4.2, 5.4.3, and 5.4.4. Findings of fact that the project in site, the project site work with the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABC. That the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Three, that the zoning commit administrator and the chief building officer official have received, reviewed this project and comment accordingly for that the project is not in congruence with the guidelines. 
with the following conditions that the wood, the wood fence be uh, treated. Opaque stain, I think is what well, the question yeah, Stained is what was asked. That the wood, wood fence be stained. Uh, was it opaque stain? Opaque stain. 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 Opaque stain looks like like paint. It just lasts and weathers a whole lot yeah. better. If it were my fence, that's what I would use. Okay. okay is there a second? Second. Okay. Any more discussion at this uh, point? I'd like to offer a friendly amendment to include okay. contemporary materials 5.5.2 5 .5 and 5.5.3. That she allows for the, the aluminum. Not a problem. Do you accept that? Yes, I do. And, okay. and then should we not include 5.3.3 since we're not using any wells? That makes good sense. Okay. That, yes, that, that guidance says well should be properly dressed or grounds. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. okay. Do you have those two things, Matt? Yep. I think okay. we also want to include about three inch from about three feet high. Okay. He has that. Yeah. Okay. Right. He has all that, I think, written down. Okay. Okay, so uh, I call for a vote. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. All of those opposed, hearing none, the motion passed. Can I have a motion to issue a COA? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. Second. All of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed, hearing none, your COA can be given. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Let's see, Madam Chair, before we get too far along on this next application, I will be presenting, so I ask to be temporarily excused. Okay. Madam Chair, I move that Commissioner Tripp be second. Recused. Recused. Right. Recused. Second. All, okay, we've had a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, there are none. Right. Say Madam oh, Chair, but, <laughs> believe it or not, this is also across the street from me. And Madam so, Chair, I move that. Commissioner Ellen be recused from. Second. Okay, all We're those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed, hearing none. We will, we will let her go back out to her seat in the audience. How many pieces of property do you own? Okay. So if we could have an overview, sir. Certainly. So uh, this is an application for 719 East Front Street to include construction on a vacant lot of an infill house in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. Uh, this is a reapplication with modifications of an expired certificate of appropriateness. So uh, this is the application, and uh, you'll see. We see somewhere else that uh, they did indeed pay for this, pay the fees. Uh, you can see it's filled out here and signed below by the authorized representative. Um, this is their cover sheet with um, some of the attached information, including all of the various, you can see on the left, the various uh, guideline numbers. And there's the payment receipt, 107. And this then is also their authorization for to be representing the owners, the core, the core family. All right, so you can see we're gonna have to get quite a bit smaller here. Okay, so. This being the first sheet of uh, drawings um, shows an aerial photograph of the site shown here shaded in the crosshatch white. It is currently in a vacant lot on the corner of Queen and East Front Streets. <coughs> so now this is essentially the site plan for the, uh, for the project. Um, the house is shown on the right hand side here with a uh, garage, um, let's point it out here, a garage shown here, and then another garage, second garage or workshop shown here on the left. 
Uh, this large white area is the driveway leading out to Queen Street. Uh, the house itself is this white uh, shape down here. Uh, this pixelated space here is more or less garden space, uh, elevated. I'm sorry, uh, that's a porch, uh, open deck. And then this out front is a covered porch. And we have steps down to the front sidewalk along East Front Street. Uh, this uh, neighboring lot is no longer vacant. It actually has a, um, a new house on it as well. So go down one. So we look at the drawings, and I'll have to make this smaller again. So well, I guess we don't get much of a choice here. Um, so this being the uh, front elevation of the house from East Front Street, you can see the steps on, uh, on this right-hand side here. It's actually a two-level um, porch with uh, all the posts and railings, uh, gable end. It's topped with a metal roof. On the left-hand side, uh, it looks like uh, this is right on the front elevation, but this is actually, this left side here is actually pushed back quite a few feet, 20 feet or so, I guess. Uh, and is an enclosed, screened-in uh, porch on that side. Uh, and then on the right-hand side uh, of the building, you can see a terraced uh, garden landscape down to the sidewalk on the right. So then this is then the back elevation. Uh, and um, in this particular, for convenience, the garage has been um, sliced out of the picture, just so you can see the elevation of the house. This being the garage roof, where it would um, fall with relation to the house. Uh, and we have a small uh, breezeway deck of sorts, I guess, which has got um, mechanical equipment on it and a door accessing that. And then on the first floor uh, are some steps out the back door uh, down to um, another set of steps that then returns back around behind the, or in between the house and the garage. Uh, on the right hand side you see the screened in porch, which on this end has a doorway, there's a deck and some stairs here as well. And on the left hand side is the uh, terrace landscaping from the other end. Uh, also in these drawings shows uh, some uh, elevations of various shutter configurations for the various windows. We can talk about those if you'd like. Uh, same thing uh, here, here's another series of shutters. Uh, then on this elevation, this is now the Queen Street elevation. You can see the stairway out the front of the house on the left, uh, the double story uh, porch. Double decker, I don't know which one to call that. That's what they call it in Boston, anyway. Uh, and then uh, uh, you can see the uh, the garden, the terrace garden here on this side. Um, below the, the porch are a series of louvers in between the piers that serve as the flood vents uh, for the house. And then now you can see how the garage has a uh, breezeway between itself and the house. And there's that, uh, I guess, breezeway deck that I called it, where the uh, mechanical units will um, be positioned behind. Uh, on this side, I think it's louvers. On the other side, uh, there's uh, handrail pickets. Uh, this uh, shows one of the changes from the uh, previous uh, approval, uh, shown in this uh, red cloud. And that is that the roof has been changed in the previous approval, the roof was a gable facing Queen Street. So the roof has now been rotated 90 degrees and a dormer has been added. So let's see, next page. So now we'll look at it from the neighbor's side. So the, uh, the front steps again on the right now. Uh, and now we can see the extent of the screened-in porch. I guess I was mistaken. The screened-in porch is not uh, 20 feet recessed from the front facade. It is only a few feet recessed. Um, sorry about that. Oh, what the heck? Okay, stop that. 
Okay, so, uh, and you can see the port, this screened-in porch then does have a short deck and then some steps down on this side. Um, the uh, fence for the property ends uh, at, or begins or starts at this location on the side of the building. And then uh, we'll see, uh, I guess uh, we can talk about that in the, in the site plan view where it goes from there. Uh, basically along the property line all the way to the back corner and then from the back corner uh, out to Queen Street and around to enclose the driveway as well. So uh, here we see the, uh, again, that modification to the garage uh, roof uh, with a dormer also on this side. All right. So. Not all of those. So that's the house, all the elevations for the house. Now for the, uh, uh, this is the workshop uh, first. Uh, and we see on the right hand side is the elevation of the workshop that, uh, that's facing Queen Street. Yeah. That's facing east front on the right hand side. So it's facing the neighbor. That's facing east front. The workshop. Yeah, okay. see the fence? Oh, yes, okay, yeah. yes. And you can see the fence on the left along the property line. Um, so this garage, uh, what looks like garage door, um, leads out the lawn. Uh, and then on the left, then, is the uh, elevation facing uh, the Queen Street or the neighbor. Yes, that one's, that elevation's facing the neighbor because the elevation facing Queen Street does have uh, garage doors and uh, fences on the right for the property line. Then uh, the last elevation is the elevation facing the property to the back of the property. And am I missing something on this sheet? No. So, um, then these are elevations of the garage itself again. So we've already seen two on the left before. Uh, the one in the, on the upper right is also still essentially the uh, connection to the house. Is that correct? Yes. Um, we have two dormers on the left and right. Okay, so the house is to the left of this upper one. The house is over here on this, uh, for this elevation. And so this is the elevation. Now I'm confused. Yeah, so the bottom right hand the illustration right. faces the uh, apartments. Uh, and faces the driveway. And, okay. and, and connects okay. to the driveway. I got you, right. So, okay, right. So uh, this upper right-hand view is uh, essentially cutting the house away, <laughs> and you see the uh, side of the garage that's facing the house. There we go. Um, okay. All right, and now these are some um, renderings provided to show uh, the proposal in its location. So the actual proposal is this building here on the right in the, in the black bubble. Uh, and you can see the existing new house in turquoise next to it. And then the Queens Point uh, condominiums on the left. So this is East Front Street. And then uh, this is also from East Front Street looking back towards the project. Uh, I don't know why this does not let go of my cursor. So the turquoise uh, house is in front of the project, and you can just see the um, project itself poking out here. We can zoom in on that if you would like. But, and then these are some other examples of similar um, projects on the same street. Not similar, I'm sorry. Adjacent um, properties on the same street give some context. Then we have our internal uh, document. And this one uh, says the uh, 
proposed structure is in compliance with setbacks per 16188B, and the proposed project will require a building permit, of course. And then we're ready for our recommendations when you are. Okay. Do any of the members have conflict of interest? Other than what we already know. <laughs> We're down two. Okay, any issues on the application's completeness? Okay, if the uh, applicants or representative lot would like to present the application. Most please, certainly. Please state your name. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Tripp Ewer. I'm a principal with MBF Architects, and we're representing the cores tonight. I think Matt did an exemplary job of uh, giving an overview of the application. We've got a detailed materials list um, that uh, is part of the documentation you have, but just a real quick overview. We've got fiberglass asphalt shingles on our steeper roof slopes. We've got uh, contemporary metal roofing with flat pans and double lock seams, um, but the flashings are on top of the seams. That's the contemporary part. For the low roofs, they, they're typically over the porches. Uh, we have a cement fiberboard siding, both clabbered, predominantly on the residents, as well as you'll see a little bit of board and batten, um, typically up in gable areas. Uh, all of those will have smooth surfaces. Um, and then I, I think it's uh, pretty easy to identify the masonry uh, foundation and we have some articulation and wood louvers in there as well as uh, Matt highlighted the uh, planners uh, that we've used along Queen Street in particular to minimize the height of uh, garden walls to be in compliance with the guidelines. And then lastly there may be some questions about fencing but uh, we, ha we have uh, sections in the application uh, showing their heights as well as their construction. And if we look real carefully on the elevations, you can kind of see where a, a particular height of fence starts and stops. And uh, we, we can cover any questions that you might have uh, with that if, if, if you'll just ask me. So uh, again, just wanted to reiterate that this application has been approved by a previous commission. It just happens to be a little more than a year ago. Um, also, we spent a, uh, or focused our time, I should say, at design review talking about the turning of the uh, gable roof on the one outbuilding that's adjacent to Queen Street. Um, so uh, <clears throat> that said, there are no changes um, to our application except for the fact, Madam Chair, I got my painters out and we made that a turquoise building in the rendering to help us uh, uh, get our bearings. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. Okay. So is there any testimony from anybody who is a notified proponent of this project? Seeing none, is there any testimony from anybody who is a notified opponent of this project? Seeing none and there being none rebuttal, is there anyone with relevant evidence and has standing that would like to present anything? Seeing none, sir, if you would tell us what your conclusions are. Sure. Um, actually, first, uh, can you demonstrate where the um, fence heights are so we can? Yeah, if you go back one slide, you just. You just pass. Yeah, other direction. But oh. Right there are right. all the heights stipulated for the balusters as well as the fences. Um, okay. But in, in addition, if we look at the elevations, particularly the uh, East Front Street elevations and the Queen Street, and we talked previously about the fence and the outbuilding diagrams, it'll give the height at those locations as well. So we have the elevation here. Right. Um, so we've but got, really, got it think, right there at the porch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you pan. Whoop. Right here at the porch, right? Yeah, right yep. there. Right. All right. And now go up. Sorry. And then we've got another one right. Whoop, you just had another one on the outbuilding. I don't know what's whoop. <laughs> whoop. 
That's uh, architecture speak for too far. Yeah. That one? No. Okay, so on the far right, we've got the low fence. Yes. In that corner. That's on uh, Queen. Right. So essentially, my question was really um, once, well, maybe we should go to the plan view. Once mm -hmm. we get across the driveway. Right. A four foot high gate, apparently. Right. Uh, and then turn the corner. At that, what point does it go to no longer four feet? At the corner. So uh, back, back I thought it was my understanding that it was to be four feet in the in the primary ABC. So at least back as far as the edge of the building, and then goes up to six feet. Correct. After that. So there will be a section of four foot. Yep. Okay. I misspoke. That's all right. Okay. Okay. So uh, that was my only question really was where it changes from four feet to six feet along that side there or the back. Well, whatever and, you want to call and it. we can define that point more specifically. Yeah. Because okay. that is, is a bit of a gray area. All right. Uh, so then in that case. My recommendations, not mine, our recommendations. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so. Uh, this is for 719 East Front Street. Uh, the owners are Sharon and Corinne, Shannon and Corinne Kaur. Uh, and it is obviously uh, not in the uh, National Register listing information. Uh, so it's 306 New Street to include construction on a vacant lot of an infill house in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABC. This is a reapplication with modifications of an expired COA. Staff submits the following historic guidelines as appropriate to this application. Development pattern 2.1.1 through 2.1.3. Utilities 2.3.1, 2.3.2. Landscaping 2.4.2 through 2.4.5. Fences and garden walls 2.5.1 through 2.5.3 and 2.5.5. <coughs> Accessory structures 2.6.1, 2.6.2. Parking 2.7.2, 2.7.5. Design principles 3.1.1, 3.1.2, and 3.1.4. Infill construction 3.4.1 through 3.4.4. Foundations 4.1.2 through 4.1.4. <coughs> Walls, trim, and ornamentation, 4.2.4. Windows, doors, and openings, 4.3.3, 4.3.4. Entrances, 4.4.4, 4.4.5. Roofs, 4.5.4 and 4.5.6. Paint, 5.4.2 through 4. I'm sorry, 5.4.6. Contemporary materials, 5.5.1 through 5.5.3 and 5.5.5 and 5.5.6. So the statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project is new infill construction within the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. Um, and we have the same issue about the painting of the wood fence and not indicating the height of the fence along the south and east property lines, which we just resolved. Uh, or we resolve that it will be indicated uh, to us. Uh, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly, and the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So we <coughs> recommend the commission approve this application to include installation of a new, what? Uh, the wrong one, okay. You know why that was? Because it says 3.306 New Street. Yeah, that's right. 
So I fixed the address on this one, but uh, not the uh, recommendation. Hold on. All right. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include construction on a vacant lot of an infill house in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABC. Uh, citing the aforementioned guidelines with the conditions that uh, the wood fencing uh, be treated and opaque stain. Yeah. And the fencing installed to the height limits according to the guidelines. So is there any evidence from anybody from the city, state, or government that would like to speak? Seeing none. Sir, would you like to make any final comments on your project? Uh, only that we take no exception to the uh, treatment of the wood fencing with an okay. opaque stain. All right. Thank you. All right. Members, are there any questions, any comments? Well, two questions. Uh, what I heard as a recommendation from the administrator is that the garage be called an accessory structure. Is that true? Uh, I'm the sorry. reason that the garage be called an accessory structure. <clears throat> the reason I'm asking the uh -huh. question is because I know two projects within the last three years that had the same configuration, meaning that the main house was connected mm -hmm. to the structure, and they were called additions not accessory structures. So I, I just, for the sake of oh, semantics, mm -hmm. is this an addition to the house or is this an accessory structure? Because it has to do then with future applications as to how we consider them. That's right. Um, I believe because this is a new build that okay. it's not gonna matter, I don't believe. So with new builds, then we can we can add a, a breezeway between the building, the house, and the and the garage. But if somebody want to put a garage in their backyard with an existing house there already, then if you had a breezeway, uh, that would not be that would not be be approved. Is that what I'm hearing? So um, it's an it's attached to the uh, structure, so mm -hmm. it's just a part of the structure. So it would not be an accessory. The uh, the um, Workshop would be an accessory. Okay, but I'm just. But the garage is it's attached. It's um, okay. That's fine. I mean, I'm just looking for clarification on how we're using the terminology. I don't have an issue with the application. Okay. Uh, and the, the other question I had, which I don't think falls within our purview, but again, this is one where I would like to have some clarification. Uh, we've talked about this before. There's a project on Metcalf, and we were looking at the green space that was left after some additions were put in. Uh, does this meet that standard? Because this is new construction, and my understanding is that 50% has to be green space, and this doesn't look like 50% to me, although I haven't measured it. Mm -hmm. And that's not part of the HPC, that's zoning, right? Um, and that I believe there is. New construction, I don't know. Um, I believe it is part of the historic district. Let me see. I think it's referenced in our guidelines. Uh, it's also it's referenced responsibility in our zoning. Hold on. It's referenced in our uh, evaluation, internal evaluation. So we've done that calculation. I think it's on a one of the sheets of drawings. I just don't know if it's on the cover sheet of this drawing, and I can't recall at the moment exactly what percentage that is. I don't need the exact percentage. Yeah. Again, but but we've looked at right. a so pervious and impervious In space. the historic district, um, the buildings may cover 60% of the, of the property. So that's that part. Um, the green space uh, may in fact be a zoning uh, factor and that was not indicated here. Um, but you are saying it's maybe on this sheet here? Yeah, we, we've got a construction set of drawings as well. And mm -hmm. we, we've done that calculation for, for somewhere. Zoning. It doesn't look like it's that sheet. It, it must be the other yeah. set. Okay. 
So if it's, uh, since it's apparently a zoning issue, um, that would be something that will come up in the building, uh, building permit review process. And then they, if they have a problem, they'll have to fix that at that point. Again, I was just looking for whether there's a difference between, for example, putting an addition on my house, how does that influence the issue of green space versus the, something that's completely new construction? Mm -hmm. You know, is there a difference in how those of you? I'd love to help you talk about that, but I'm not in a position to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so if it goes to zoning and has to be changed, it'll have to come back to us. If it's, yeah, if it's a change of any significance, yes. Okay. If, if they have to carve off some of the pavement or something like that, that would have nothing to do with you. You know, uh, they have some rounded pavement, I believe, at one point, if they have to, uh, you know, if they're <clears throat> 10 feet, 10 square feet over or something. Oh, not rounded, but this uh, extra corner between the two. Uh, I should make this bigger so you can see what I'm pointing to. Well, hopefully none of it will come to that. It's just... I, but, right, but there, that's a potential location where they could carve off that corner and pick up a couple extra but, square um, feet if they need to. If I could suggest, uh, again, we, we've done a calculation uh, regarding impervious surface area to green space. Um, I apologize for not having that number to give to you tonight, but we certainly understand if that number changes that we'll have to come back to see you. Okay. And, and so we'll report back to staff uh, what that finding is. Okay. So we could go ahead and vote on this and it, zoning would take care of the, it, that issue, and then if it has to come back to us, then we will review it again. That's correct. Okay. Is everyone comfortable with that process? Is, yeah. Are our members yeah. comfortable with that process to go ahead and vote on this at this time? Question. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, with reference back to Joe, uh, trip clarify, okay, so that bridge that goes over the back door that has the little fence on top. Does that, that hooks onto the garage? Uh, yes, right? it And connects. since they put the dormers on there, is it intended as a living space? Uh, it is not. It is not? Intended as a living space. Correct. So on top of that platform are the uh, air conditioner condensing units to get them above the flood plain. Okay. So it's not So, so a it's a mechanical way. platform. Okay. Well, you can walk from A to B. Yeah. And there are doors on either side, so conceivably you could walk from uh, one structure to the other, but it's more of a serviceability arrangement than it is anything else. Okay. Okay. Are we all ready to vote? Any other questions? Okay, does anybody want to make a motion? I move that we find the application for 719 East Front Street. Am I correct on that? Uh, where am I going to uh, include an instruction on a construction on a vacant lot of an infilled house on the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABC. Mm -hmm. This is a re application with modifications of an expired COA. Um, the applicable uh, guidelines would be for developmental pattern 2.1.1, 2.1.2, 2 2.1.3. Utilities 2.3.1, 2.312. Landscaping 2.412, 2 2.4.3, 2.4.4, 2.4.45. The um, fences and garden walls 2.5.1, 2.5.2. 2.5.3, 2.5.5. Accessory constructures, constructures are 2.6.1, 2.6.2. Parking is 2.7.2 and 2.7.5. Design principles, 3.1.1, 3.1.2. Four point one through three point four point four. 
foundations, 4.1.2, 4.1.3, 4.1.4. Walls, trams, and the ornamentation, 4.2.4. Windows, doors, and openings, 3.4.3.3, 3.4. 4.3.4, entrances 4.4.4 and 4.4.5, roofs 4.5.4, 4.5.6, paint from 5.4.2 through 5.4.6, contemporary materials um, 5.5.1 through 5.5.3, and 5.5.5 through 5.5.6. Reasons, of, uh, um, statements of reason is a- uh, Findings of fact. Oh, thank you. Finding of fact, the project is a new landfill construction with, with primary, secondary, and tertiary ABC. Exception for not proposing to paint a wooden fence and not indicating the height of the fence along the south and uh, east property lines. This will be indicated. And the zoning administrator and the chief building official have, a, have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. The project is not incongruous with the guidelines. Second. Okay, I don't think so. We've got a second. Is there any more discussion? All of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed, hearing none. The proposal passed. Is there a motion to issue a COA? So moved. Okay, is there a second? We have a second. All of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed, none. Sir, you have your COA. Thank you for your consideration. You're welcome. May I come back to join you? Yes, we will. Madam Chair, I move that our two <laughs> members be allowed to rejoin the commission. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. We will have our members back. Okay, uh, who seconded the uh, actual first motion? I did. And then who uh, motioned the issuing the COA in the second? James. I did. James. And then who seconded? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, so if we go to 248 Craven Street. Two forty eight Craven Street to include installation of new landscaping, fencing, and brick screen walls in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. So here we go. So you can see uh, that new little bar across the top under Newburn um, indicates that it's been paid in full. Uh, you can see the application includes the said information. Um, and they've signed at the bottom. The, uh, this is their um, sketch site plan. Um, I'll go to the next one real quick because they, in the meantime, they colorized it to make it easier to understand, but it is massively big. There we go. Okay, so, um, go one more. All right, so this shows uh, the back of the building is uh, shown here at the top of the picture. At the picture, uh, Pollock Street is on the right. Their uh, driveway to their parking lot is on the bottom, and then the neighboring building here is on the left. So currently, all of this space, we'll see a picture later of what it looks like currently, but it's basically all lawn with a uh, walkway that kind of uh, curves through the middle of the lawn. Uh, and in the back corner are, are some uh, uh, utilities and a storage uh, uh, cabinet. 
So they're proposing to um, add this, all this new brick paving all the way around here, including this rounded portion here. The existing steps are bricks and they are to remain as such. Uh, and that then creates a small strip for some landscaping along here. The brick paving uh, extends towards the utility area, which will have two new four foot high brick walls, one here and one back here. And that allows then access around the ends of both of them back to that space without having to see all that stuff back there, at least uh, below four feet. Uh, they intend to store their um, garbage cans there as well. On the left here is then a small hedge with an herb garden in the corner, uh, behind the hedge. And then on this end, another hedge of boxwood with uh, camellias, I believe it is on this side. This uh, curved uh, crescent of landscaping here is also camellias. And the ones along the building are dwarf camellias. I think I got that right. Uh, then in addition, they're uh, proposing to show uh, uh, some fencing with brick piers that you can see as these uh, uh, red squares. And the fencing, it's a decorative metal fencing and it includes two uh, gates that total eight feet wide and eight feet wide uh, to allow for a vehicle to enter if necessary. But most of the time, they will be, uh, one gate will be closed um, and the other gate will be uh, able to be open or stand open for pedestrians. So, do, do, do. so that's a close up of that, but that's not my intent here. Let's go to the next page. This is a sample of the brick that they um, sent us electronically. Um, of note to me, anyway, is how the brick has this like. Um, battered edge to it. And it's also um, uh, different colors, uh, which is uh, a very variation of colors of brick, burnt bricks, red bricks, and a little bit of white. And then, um, so now we have to go back to this. So this is a sample of a similar fence that they uh, point to. Um, so here it has the brick piers and the decorative metal fence. And then some more metal fences. Uh, this one in the upper left is another example. And then the ones below it are from the manufacturer's uh, information regarding fencing the fences. There you go. Um, here's the other sample. Uh, so these are, again, I guess powder coated aluminum fences. This is the gate at the top, and these are some of the finials. And then this is the uh, uh, drawing of the design of the uh, fencing. So these show some existing photographs um, taken from Google Maps. So uh, a couple of years ago, you can see uh, just the, basically right now it's just lawn and actually one of the two trees is gone. This tree is here still and this tree is gone. Um, and of note also is that there's a handicapped ramp on this side, we'll see that in a second down here, a handicapped ramp for this side entrance as well. So um, the brick paving then, they'll be removing all of this concrete paving and putting in the brick paving, extending straight across from the base of the uh, steps to get your bearings on where it actually lands. And uh, so what is going on here? Okay, computer's taking a little long today. Did I miss something? Yes. So um, to give you some idea of the uh, existing brickwork in a little bit closer up detail, um, 
This is the brickwork for the original Dunn building on this side, the old historic portion. And uh, you may have realized that the uh, other portion where the brick steps are is a new addition for um, elevator tower and lobbies. Um, so this shows you the original brick. Then on the upper right here, this shows the newer brick from that elevator tower. And these are the brick steps um, out the back of the building. And then uh, these are bricks for the neighboring building. And you can see the, the green lawn here in the background here, as well as the elevator tower. So uh, this was um, another example that they were, had been pointing to uh, originally. And now I believe uh, this is closer to the design that they now are proposing because this one includes these uh, little circles in the top of the fence. Uh, the, the fence brochure from the other applicant called those rings. But this also gives you an idea uh, the, the gate will be about this size as well, uh, but flat on the top instead of arched. And this also gives you an idea that uh, their proposal also includes basically two panels of fencing, uh, which means there's uh, one uh, metal post in between each of the brick posts. Don't know if that makes any difference to you, but that helps explain it maybe more detail. So this is the internal um, zoning and inspections review. Uh, this one meets uh, the zoning requirements and will not require a building permit. So then we're ready for your recommend, our recommendations when you're ready. Okay. Do any members have any conflict of interest with this project? Seeing none, does anybody have any issues on the application's completeness? Seeing none, would the applicant or the representative like to present the application or make any comments? Sir, have you been uh, sworn in? Yes, ma'am. Oh, you have? Okay. All right. Can you give your name? Joe Cannon, Newburn Farm Garden Landscape Services owner. Okay. Uh, a couple clarifications. The brick screening walls for the utility area will be five foot tall, um, not four foot. And then what we're proposing for the new fence is a flat top with rings, and there's the new picture there. There we go. Same manufacturer, and the same manufacturer of the one that's already I've been put in downtown, but these will be flat across the top with the rings. And then for the brick columns, you saw in a picture they have the white caps. That is, the, the columns are going to be 16 inch columns with the white caps that are identical to tabernacle caps, which are, were seen in the pictures. And then the one, the brick face. So the brick face you guys saw, that would be the columns of the wall, whereas this is the uh, papers for the flat work. Would you like me to pass them around? No, that's okay. Mm -mm. No. I think, no, I think we you. saw them before. We've seen them before. Yep. We saw them at Design Review. So the fence will be 48 inches tall. The columns will be four and a half feet tall. And that will be from ground level. So when you're standing on the sidewall, that is the actual height that they will be. There will be no raised soil and then. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything else you'd like to add? That is it. Thank you, guys. Okay. All righty. Is there anybody who is a notified proponent of this application that would like to speak? Anyone who's a notified opponent like to speak? There's not many of you left. There's only four of you out there. Okay? All right, so there's no rebuttal from the applicant. Is there anyone with relevant evidence and has standing who would like to speak? Seeing none, 
can we uh, have, sir, what your uh, H your group got together and decided about this application, sir? So this is the um, 248 Craven Street. Uh, the applicant, uh, the owner is the uh, um, condo association and uh, Denny Butcher is the president of the condo association. Uh, the building is the Dunn Building from 1924. It is uh, contributing a resource in the historic district and the inventory description from 2003 s describes it as four stories, brick, four bays wide, six bays deep, plain parapet. 248 Craven Street project is to include installation of new landscaping, fencing, and brick screen walls in the primary, secondary, and tertiary AVCs. The staff submits the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. For utilities, 2.3.1, landscaping, 2.4.3, 2.4.4, fences and garden walls, 2.5.1 through 2.5.3, modifications, 3.2.1, masonry, 5.1.2, and metals, 5.3.3. Uh, that's the one about welding. Uh, so statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project is site work within the primary and secondary ABCs. Proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly, and the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include installation of new landscaping, fencing, and brick screen walls in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs, citing the aforementioned guidelines. And do we need to add in there the new fencing that he presented tonight? Uh, he, they only changed the one detail at the top with the rings in it. Okay. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there any testimony from any state, city, or government person? Seeing none. Is there any final comment, sir, you would like to make? No, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Members of the commission, do you have any questions, any comments that you'd like to make at this time? The brick that you picked for the columns, am I correct, it matches best the building that's behind? Yeah, behind. Yes, sir, because the brick on the Dunn building is a common yeah. Smooth finish brick, but the ones on the back is a more antique look, and yeah. because that's the main view when you're walking up, that's the ones we wanted to try to match, it's more of an antique look. But the bricks still have a smooth finish, but they got the antique edges and then the, the discoloring. Yes, sir. My question is on the fencing. Mm -hmm. What type of material is that? It's an aluminum fence. Okay, so um, like before, it's going to be wherever it meets is going to be hidden from you? Yes, sir. So it'll be attached to the brick columns. The brick columns will be free floating, so nothing will be attached to any of the buildings. Oh, so it's just going to be one long? Well, there'll be, yeah, there'll be four columns on one side and five on the other. And in between the brick columns, we'll have to have an aluminum post. And they will all be connected on the aluminum post. And all those fixtures will be hidden by caps. Okay. Yes, sir. But I believe 5.3.3 does yes. not Does not. Apply. That's why I asked that question. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? 5.5.3 like does. Right. Ooh, you did a gold stop. So it should be 5.5.3, not 5.3.3. Anyone else? As a resident of Newburn, so happy to see that guy. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It will be a lovely addition to that area. Okay. Can I call for a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we find an application for 248 Craven Street, a certificate of appropriateness for 248 Craven Street, being not congruent with New Bern's Code of Ordinance, Section 15411 to 15429, and New Bern's Historical District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Utilities, 2.3.1, landscaping, 2.3. 4.3 through 2.4.4. Fencing, fences and garden walls, 2.5.1 through 2.5.3.
modifications, 3.2.1, masonry, 5.1.2, uh, contemporary materials, 5.5.3. Findings of fact, the project is site work within the primary and secondary ABC. The proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. For the project is not in congruence with the guidelines. Second. Second. Is there any other discussion? Okay. Can I call for a vote? All of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed? Hearing none. The motion passes. Can I have a motion to issue a COS? So moved. Second. Second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Having none, you can issue the COA, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for making this a lovely green area. Thank you. Thank you. So, and last but not least, right, 520 East Front Street to include construction of a small storage shed with a low brick foundation and painted wood lap siding doors and trim to be located in the secondary ABC. So, um, this is the application. You can see it's paid in full. Uh, the application is also complete. We don't have anything up there. Oops, sorry. Took our paper away, and there we go. All right. So, starting over, there we see it's paid in full, and we can see the application is complete through to and including the signature of the authorized represent representative, which is authorized by that form there. And now we have the drawings. go. So um, the subject is this black area or this area here shown in black on this plan, a small shed, uh, a new small shed there at that location. So this, these photographs give you an idea as to the location. Um, it's behind uh, this uh, brick wall here. This is just a stack of loose bricks. It's just sitting there uh, but where this shrub bush is, uh, essentially the shed will be there uh, or behind that shrub bush. A uh, better view is this one here on the right where the trash cans are is where the shed will be. The trash cans would then be inside the shed. Uh, and then this view here shows how far back it is and off to the side, basically behind this <coughs> shrub here is where the shed will be. And then these are the drawings for the project. Um, here we see a, a larger plan view of that right here. Uh, and there's that brick wall going along here, and here are the shrubs uh, here as well. Um, so th also dashed in the two little trash cans here and then some other storage uh, as well. You can see it's next to their driveway. And then here are some elevations uh, these are the elevations from the driveway um, of this structure. It's only six and a half feet tall. Uh, I'm sorry, five and a half feet tall uh, on this front, on the front facade of the shed. Uh, and then it slopes back to even lower at the back. Uh, the back edge sits on the brick wall that's back there and they're adding a, a brick foundation for the actual structure itself. Uh, the sides, and the doors are all wood, as well as the trim. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. The only issue I, I had um, was uh, it, there was no indication of the roof, roofing material. So um, we'll just have to ask them to clarify that.
So there's our zoning and, and inspections review. Um, it does meet the requirements of land use ordinance zoning and it will it will require a building permit since it's over 12 feet long in one dimension. And then we're ready with our recommendations. Okay. Is there any conflict of interest among any members? Seeing none, is there any issues on application completeness? Seeing none, would the applicant or their representative like to give us any other additional information? Hello, my name is Sarah Afflerback with Go Architectural Design. And uh, no, that's pretty much it. Okay. The roof of the shed? Uh, the roof of the shed. Are you sure it's not on the application? Yeah. Uh, it'd be hand seam metal oh. to match the house. I think it's, it's a little too low for shingles on there. Okay, so if, we, if you can add that to the application. Yep. Okay. I'm not going to go through proponents, opponents, all of that. There's no one left in our audience to do any of that. There's nobody there to give us relevant evidence or has standing as there's no one left. So that if you would like to go ahead and give us what the staff had to say about this. All right. So um, this is 520's Front Street owned by Hubie and Alice Tolson. Uh, it is the Samuel W. Smallwood House, built circa 1885. It is a contributing resource in the district, and the description from 2003 is it is two stories, two bays wide, canopy roofed, bay window to right of front door, one story west wing, and hip roof. So 520's front street is to include construction of a small storage shed with a low brick foundation and painted wood lap siding doors and trim to be located in the secondary ABC. Uh, we submit the following historic district guidelines as appropriate to this application. Accessory structures 2.6.1, foundations 4.1.3, walls trim and ornamentation 4.2.4, roofs 4.5.4, masonry 5.1.2, Wood 5.2.2, paint 5.4.2, 5.4.3, and contemporary materials 5.5.6. I think the paper to write all that down was probably bigger than the shed itself, uh, but nevertheless. Uh, statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are one, the project is an accessory building within the secondary ABC. Two, if the roofing meets the requirements of the guidelines, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Three, the zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And four, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include construction of a small storage shed with a low brick foundation and painted wood lap siding doors and trim to be located in the secondary ABC citing the aforementioned guidelines with the condition that the roofing meet the requirements of the guidelines. Thank you, sir. There is no one in our audience from the city, state, or government, so we will move on. Do you have any other comments you'd like to make? No. All right. So, members, is there, are there any other questions that you'd like to ask? I have a question that perhaps Tripp can have the answer to, or, or perhaps our administrator. Uh, is because it has a, a brick foundation, would that be considered to be a substantial foundation as opposed to other sheds? I mean, it would, I don't know, if it's a substantial foundation, then we would have to include guideline 2.6.2. That's, uh, that's really the question. It's not a big issue with regard to the application, but I don't know if because there's a bricked foundation, should we consider that substantial or not? The, the brick is really there just to keep the wood off the ground. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't consider it substantial. But yeah. what is your definition of substantial? Well, that's, that's I'm not exactly yeah. sure. As I uh, look over 2.6.2, I, I think masonry would be considered a substantial foundation, as opposed to skids. Mm -hmm. that are often under these buildings. Uh, 
So it's going to be substantial, so we need to include that guideline. Mm -hmm. Okay? 2.6. Anything else? Anyone? Uh, okay. I do. Um, I have a question. Clarify for me, please, uh, Matt, why we did not allow 610 New Street to have a double door because it looked like a barn, and yet this building is allowed to have a double door. No, it, it, it had a double door, didn't it? Is it not two doors, sir? Yes. There's two separate Four. doors. So, uh, I think it, the double door was brought up for the other applicant at design review as a recommendation. So it wasn't a recommendation uh, based on um, uh, meeting or not meeting a guideline. I think it was just a, uh, a recommendation mm -hmm. that it um, had, had more to do with appearance than yeah. it did the fact it had two doors. I don't I don't recall them wanting a double door. Well, yeah, so yeah, the, original, the original proposal did have a double did door. Have a double door. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, that one was based on design, what they were putting on the door. Oh. And then once we started talking to them about it, they said they didn't want it. There, there's no guideline that specifically says you can't do a double door. Right. Correct. Oh, okay. Good. Are we ready for a motion? Can I'm someone chair. make a motion? Madam Chair, I move we find the application for a certificate of appropriateness for 520 East Front Street to be not incongruous with Newman's Code of Ordinance, sections 15-411 to 15-429, and Newman's Historic District Guidelines, based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Applicable guidelines. 2.6.1, Findings of fact. The project is an accessory building within the secondary ABC. If the roofing meets the requirements of the guidelines, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. The project is not in course with the guidelines. The condition, I'd like to attach the condition that the roofing meet the requirements of the guidelines. Second. Okay, we have a second. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments, concerns? Okay. So we'll call for the motion. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So the motion passed. Can I have a motion to issue a COA? So moved. Second. Second. All of those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed? None. So the COA can be given. Thank you. Thank you very much. are knocking down the doors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're now on item five. So well, let's see. This. Do you have an opening? Sure. Uh, item five yeah. is um, uh, to discuss the removal of Trent Court from the local historic district. Uh, there are essentially three parts to this. First, uh, to discuss the draft report. 
Uh, second is to consider approval and request to send to the SHPO, to the State Historic Preservation Office, for review and comment. And then thirdly, a, re a request from you that staff proceed with the zoning map amendment process. So, so uh, maybe I should start because uh, this board was kind enough to give me an assignment last design review. <laughs> And although well, we want to make you happy, <laughs> I understand. I'm, I'm happy to serve, and um, at least the assignment given has evolved somewhat um, based on some of the email shared uh, last week relative to the alderman's meeting to act on the redevelopment plan. Um, but I do have some additional information that I've been able to gather since then. I've uh, made contact with Marty Blaney. He's the uh, uh, director of the Public Housing Authority. Okay, and um, we had some conditions, if you recall, uh, that, that we discussed related to this. Uh, uh, I'm going to call it a, a mapping change for the moment, although it's a bit more involved than that. And and so it took me a couple days to get up with Marty, but I finally made contact with him. Um, what I've learned is he is uh, uh, in the short rows a short-termer, as we say, um, and uh, I asked when his uh, replacement would be coming in. He said, uh, March. I said, okay. Um, I, I went over uh, <clears throat> the conditions upon which we had discussed most recently and, and also back in July, um, and uh, uh, as you can imagine, someone in his position, he was really uh, resistant to um, begin to initiate a discussion uh, just because he knew his successor was coming in and would be somebody who had to live with those um, decisions. So uh, the one thing he could uh, promise or commit to is that he would uh, make introduction to the new, and I'm going to call it the Director of Public Housing, there might be a slightly different title. Um, and uh, <clears throat> but but he wasn't prepared to really uh, offer any opinions on the more important aspects of of, of uh, what we're after. Um, so long and short, he's asked. My interpretation of our discussion is that he's asked that we coordinate with his successor, who's going to be here in about a month, and. Uh, uh, well, that's what he's asked. So I don't know if there are any discussion or questions um, at, at the moment about where I think we are. So perhaps before we move forward, we need to talk with his assessor. Well, I, I, again, that's the, uh, the decision maker, right. you know, at this point. And, and, and so uh, uh, I had hoped to come here tonight with a decision from the decision maker and it's not fanning out that way. Well, we might want to also continue our conversation because at the end of our meeting at Design Review, we also talked about, you know, whether we wanted to completely give up uh, this land out of the historic district mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how that land impacts and is on the edge of the historic part of uh, Newburn. So do we need to make a motion to uh, continue to review this or hold on to the report for the time being? What would we need to do, Matt? So um, let's see. You. Um, First of all, reflecting on what the report says, uh, I'm not sure that the report would change with respect to whatever the new person would be committing to or not committing to in the future. Uh, the report would probably still remain the same, assuming you agree. Um, you, it, this, this is your report for you to um, decide whether or not that's true or not or if you want to tweak it in any particular way. Mm -hmm. um, so the report is uh, for the purpose of submitting to the State Historic Preservation Office 
um, for their review and comment. That is a period that they are allowed um, up to 30 days to do. Um, their com review and comment then would, would then be used by both the, or could be used by both the uh, Zoning and uh, Planning and Zoning Commission as well as the Alderman uh, as they then, um, uh, they're the next two steps in the process um, as they consider their decisions. So, wait a minute, back. So, their decision on what, back? So, on, on whether or not to remove this area from the historic district. So, uh, maybe at this point I should back up a little bit and explain the entire process. Oops. So, um, the entire process ends up being a zoning map change. Because, in essence, the historic districts are zoning map overlay districts that um, so in order to remove a piece of the district from the overlay district from the historic district you're essentially changing the zoning map so that's the end result is if um, it all works out that way uh, the zoning map would remove that portion of uh, the overlay district would remove that area from that portion of the overlay district on the map. So that decision, let's work backwards, is ultimately made by the aldermen. The aldermen only make that decision after they get a recommendation from the planning commission. So uh, that process can start at any point, at any time could start tomorrow morning, if you so choose. This is one of the decisions I've asked for you to make this evening, uh, uh, the third decision. Uh, so uh, that timeline for that, uh, the deadline for submitting the application for planning and zoning is March 17th, but their meeting isn't until April 7th. So um, the third, for them to get a letter from the State Historic Preservation Office, let's say 30 days from tomorrow or Friday, 19, 20, 21. So we're talking uh, 21st of March at the latest that they would need to be responding to us. Wait, there's only 29 days in February. There's 29 days. Anyway. Right around there. Gotcha. So, um, uh, so that would be before their meeting, but after their application deadline. Well, the Redevelopment Commission report has been approved by mm -hmm. the Board of Aldermen. That was approved last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So, and now what I understand, what they said, even with their approvals, changes can be made to that. That's just like a blueprint. Or a concept, a concept. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah, either way, how we want to put that. So, but my main concern, and I believe all of us kind of feel the same way, is the preservation of the, the placards on the building and at least one of the buildings. I mean, I, I thought we said something at design review. For some reason, something is floating in my head about you really can't remove historical property from the historical district or I can't remember how it was exactly put but I keep re visualizing this that we would say that that can't happen because of you know it's got not just us it's got to go beyond us for it to and it's not going to be done I mean yeah so um, so um, we can't do it unless we send this report to the state to the State Historic Preservation Office. But once we send it there, they have 30 days to uh, comment. If they don't comment after 30 days, the city is free to act without any information or, um, um, I, I guess, guess you could say, uh, interference from the state. Now, is it, 
are they considered part of the National Historical Registry? Yes. Yes, yes. so that would not change. The National Register Historic District wouldn't change. We're only talking about this local zoning overlay district. But if you tear down the buildings, right. then they're, they're no longer there. That's correct. That, so, and that happens, I'm going to say, all the time. Uh, we have already, if you look at the National Register, uh, at the website that shows all the National Register uh, historic district properties that are listed in the inventory, there are many that show up that are gone. In your draft for your, your no, report? That doesn't necessarily justify allowing that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's not unusual. But don't, don't they have to come to us to get agreement to demolish the building? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so what we talked about is, yeah, do we wholesale just capitulate, this is what they want? Okay. You know, and what, what precedent does that set if the, and again, or additionally, this means that whole area is then going to be subject to much greater developmental pressure. Everything around it, it's, it's like the chicken pox, you know, it comes out from a mother spot and keeps going. And so we should take that into consideration, I think. And, you know, there's also going to be a homeowner or somebody who's purchasing a property who says they just did this. Why is that okay and what I want to do not okay? Well, here's kind of my take. You can't negotiate in good faith with another party until they get you. And, and we've already been asked essentially to pass that responsibility on forward to the successor. The guy. And, and so my, my inclination is, you know, it's, it's only next month that we, you know, kind of pause and, and let that fall into place and have those discussions and, 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 and do meantime, things in an appropriate way. But in the send this to the state? No. Well, I don't see in, no, I wouldn't do that. No, Look, there's, a, there's a couple of, of discrepancies in, the, in your draft of your report that I have a question about, okay. and I really don't want to send this report until those questions have been answered. <coughs> Okay, so do we, we need to then, is the word table this until we can? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so let, let me ask my question. When you gave these, uh, these dates about when things <coughs> needed to be done by March the 17th, what is that, what is that about? Okay, Tell me so let's what now go, let's then? now, instead of going backwards, let's go forwards. It's a little yeah. easier to remember. So if you were to, um, uh, let's, I, uh, we're proposing three votes from you tonight, which it sounds like you're going to be tabling. But just let's say uh, you went forward with sending the letter to the State Historic Preservation. First, I'm sorry, first of all, uh, approve the letter, uh, the report uh, in its current form or with some revisions. Okay. Uh, second is then to send it to the State Historic Preservation Office. And then third is to uh, start the, recommend that staff start the um, zoning map amendment process. Those are the three steps or actions we were, uh, have on the agenda. So the first one is, you know, uh, whether or not you're okay with the report and if there are some changes to make what they are. Okay. Second is um, if then you were okay with that tonight and you then secondly agreed to uh, uh, or decided to send it to the State Historic Preservation Office, we could do that say tomorrow or Friday with the changes if there are any and then uh, they the State Historic Preservation Office would have until 30 days from that date to come up with their uh, re response letter. That is sent to us, and then that's provided to, obviously to you, um, but also to then uh, the Zoning uh, and Planning, Planning and Zoning Commission, as well as then eventually to the Alderman. So the, um, 
just looking at the um, shortest track forward is that the uh, planning and zoning deadline is March 17. So that's already a few days before the 30-day period would be up for the State Historic Preservation Office. But uh, I don't think there's anything precluding adding that letter to that application after the deadline. Um, their meeting isn't until April 7th, so an uh, entire three weeks later. So then um, if and when or if they were to uh, consider it and make a recommendation to the alderman at that meeting, uh, then the next available uh, step is on April 14th, the Board of Aldermen would call for a public hearing to be held on April 28th. And then on April 28th, they would hold that hearing, they would discuss the application, and then they would be, I believe, able to vote on the application or table the item to a later date. Well, this is the application to, to take all that area out of the historic district. That's correct. And, so, and, and if, we, if we decide and vote that we don't want that area taken out of our historic district, then... Right. Well, then I wouldn't, then at, at that point, I wouldn't even send the report. And I would recommend at that point also then vote to recommend to not begin the process because um, uh, I guess it's certainly possible that uh, other entities could decide to uh, make the application without you. Matt, so, am I hearing you said they really don't give a flip what we say? Excuse me? No, I, I don't think that's well, true. I, I've, I've, I'm suggesting we proceed with caution because I can't figure out who they is. Yeah. Now, each of us may have been doing our own reconnaissance, but anyone who's, you know, in, in business or on a board and, and you're trying to reach an agreement with somebody, you understand stakeholders and decision makers. And I don't understand who all the players are yet, and I'm assuming that you, my colleagues, probably don't understand all the players and and so with that I, I just simply suggest we proceed with caution and I'd like to make a motion that we uh, uh, table this item all three parts of it until our March public hearing March public second hearing? to our March design review mm, no well we've got to come to a public hearing to have these actions taken because they're votes is there anyone that can ask that we read over this this report and discuss among the, the the uh, panel about if there's any anything in there that we really aren't sure about and need clarification uh, yeah. for? Well, it's, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think this is a great time to parse through the report and, um, and, and work through with MAP, you know, what kind of language tweaks we want and, and what have you. But, but on the other hand, um, if, if our concern is truly based on the bar reliefs and 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 keeping one or more of those buildings. It would strike me that the report could help us do that by getting Shippo behind us. Sure. That. And it sounds like we're postponing that if we don't take the step. And the report seems to say that, that that's of that's of importance to us. Uh, we, we don't want the train to leave the station without without our input. And I think our input is we'd like the bar release saved and, and the building saved. And it might behoove us to get the ship out behind that. That's the other side of the coin. I, I don't think that precludes us from having communications with ship without sending the report. In fact, that may give us some guidance as to what needs to be in the report. Yeah, that's yes. a good way to do yes. it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, and then the other issue, the other issue is that we may we may decide as as a commission that we don't want to give up this property out of the historic district, so that some of what we've talked about in terms of the buildings or the reliefs would have to be negotiated with we don't know who. Yeah. So there's a motion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can we do it? Yeah. 
Can we get a second on the motion? Second. Okay. okay, now we have all the discussion. Okay, here. well, we've had discussion. I had second the motion. Oh, uh, did you? It's cool. Okay. Oh, did, oh, did you? So, all of those in favor of uh, postponing this on the agenda say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are none. We have one opposition. Okay, mm -hmm. but the motion passes. Matt, one of the things I, problems I have with this letter we've written here, it, it calls for the, the the, delimit the demolition of all 29 buildings, okay? And one of the things that we, as a board, said was that we wanted one building to remain. That's right. Right. The Housing Authority got approval from HUD to demolish all 29, but we're saying make it 28. Right. And we wanted the facades from all the buildings to be placed somewhere. Yes. Is that is that really a true statement? I understood that the deal was that one or more of those buildings were not going to be demolished. In the letter it says it's currently our understanding that one of the buildings on the higher yeah. land is not to be demolished. Yeah. And that's what I didn't understand. That's my understanding. Uh, so this is some of the clarity I hope to get from the housing authority as, yeah. as to specifically what buildings are slated for demolition. Yeah. Um, and, and get the information we need so that we can understand yeah. exactly I think HUD that. was merely saying that there are 29 buildings and if you have to take them down. They weren't saying you had to take them down. But, but right. they, they, and, and There's also the possibility that one of the buildings we want to save is not being taken down currently, which would solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. And everybody's happy. Right. It's just we haven't had the chance to have that conversation well, with the yeah. housing authority where we can get a commitment or, or a feel for. So, so how would you? I, I like your thought about going to Shippo with the, mm -hmm. to get their support for our, our position as it were. How, how would you do that? Would that just talk with them or? Well, he he, he could attempt to. I, I think he's tried before, if I'm not mistaken. And what? Have Have you attempted to contact uh, the State Historic Preservation Office in regard to this matter before? I have before, but it has been uh, several months. Yeah, and uh, they've did not gotten back to you. They haven't yeah. specifically um, so. talked to me about any of this. Um, well, so. the other issue is, though, even though HUD may have said Call that John they could all be taken down, since they're in the historic district, our commission does not, do we not have some say-so over whether or not they will, will be taken down? That's correct. So, so, we, so we have some... You at least have a one-year delay? Say that again? You have at least a one year delay. Okay. We have leverage. Yeah. Right. So so we have some leverage to figure out, you know, what because our, our issue is going to be different than the people that want to redevelop this land, take this land and use it for something else. Exactly. So and that is going to be put right beside our historic district. So I think that we ought to perhaps at next design review, at the end of design review, have a discussion about this again in terms of is that what we want to do for Newburn and for the historic district of Newburn, to open up a, a plot of land that they can take and uh, build two or three story building, put retail in there. What, we will, we will have no say-so over that if we give up this land. Well, and it sets a precedent for other parts of the historic district. Right? Absolutely, and, and that's what y'all said, you've said, you've said. So, so now that it has been tabled for the time being, put it on the agenda at the end of our next uh, design review for us to have more discussion and perhaps we can come up with something yeah. else and then maybe by that time March will be here and we <laughs> might know who we need to be talking with. Does that sound okay with everyone? Yeah. So your In quest meantime, continues. Your uh, quest continues. But yes, it quest does. continues. He yeah. needs to continue. You're yeah. assigned to continue your quest. Right. <laughs> I assume. I assume. <laughs> That's your assignment. I assume. The madam has spoken. The madam chair has spoken. She has. Before the madam chair, I know we. Yes. In the meantime, can we have Matt get in touch with Shippo to get some kind of feedback? Right. Some, some kind of guidance from Shippo on about, this matter, or about this matter. Okay, about whether or not we can do what? Um, how, we how, 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 how can we go about doing what we would like to do? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know exactly what we want to do yet. That's right. That's well, why so that's we, we, we don't know questions. exactly. Yeah. Even 
well, other than I, we're saying, we know, but we don't know. even though we're saying yeah. now that we don't want to give up this land uh, just because other people want to take it and build this, that, and the other on it due to its attachment to the historic district. Well, well, and not just the historic district, and Matt can correct me or Trip can if I'm <coughs> wrong, but some of the very, very oldest buildings in the historic district are super close to this complex. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, right, right across yeah, the street, 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 street from, from John's Palace Alice as well. and everything else. So... So I wonder if anybody from Trons Palace actually has any uh, concerns, the fact that this land might be taken out and it sits right beside them. So I don't know if that's somebody that we should be talking with as well. Um, we can, I mean, the, the palace has what, like 14 different commissions, um, but we can certainly contact somebody on one of them. But so um, I, I want to kind of go back to what James was talking about, okay. I think it's a little bit different than uh, what we were just discussing, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you you may not know how to get there, but I think you know what you want your end result to be. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And so I can, because I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to talk to them about, <laughs> uh, uh, I can talk to them about, um, one, first of all, what our end uh, um, desire is, and that is to uh, uh, preserve all the plaques somehow, and then also uh, one of the buildings. Well, not necessarily. Our, our, that may be our desire with those buildings, but also to not give up the land out of the historic district. So, well, I, 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 those perhaps. are two different items, though. They're, yeah. They're different items. And I, th I think that the desire we have is, is maybe that if some land is to be given up, there's a, there's a blend, there's some thought given to to how you transition into development from a historic area. I think, I think it's gonna happen, and I think it would be good for Newburn, but if it's, it's gotta happen well, it's gotta right. be done well. So, uh, so there's that, and then, uh, but maybe they can help us to understand how maybe some of the other factors that may help us to know how, how to get to those ends. That yeah. would be a very good thing. Yeah. Um, they may not, they might not. They, they might. might not, but you could ask. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and the other point I wanted to make was that, uh, just remember that half of the buildings are currently condemned right. and, and right. unlivable. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, just to make sure we're not thinking that we want to preserve all the buildings. Oh, no, no, no. That, that, uh, that's clear. Mm -hmm. But in the report it does say that, that, that these and financial reasons might make it necessary to rebuild the, the the housing, mm -hmm. and that should be that shouldn't be in that report, should it? Well, it, 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 if that's part of the facts. Well, I, my question was because it's something I really don't know: is have any of these buildings been had anything done to them since the storm? No. Not the ones that have been flooded yeah. totally. Right. Flooded completely. right, so they're in really terrible. But the ones that they could revitalize, they've done as the minimum to it. But there's right. people living in them down there, the ones up on the hill more or less. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes right. So there, there's people that perhaps we need to start talking to once we find out who that is, because perhaps it is that the buildings that are condemned, nothing can be done about, but maybe we could save the ones above that and then have some say-so over the, the ones that are down on the waterfront, if they were to be rebuilt in some way, what that would look like so that it fits in with the historic district. So put this on the agenda for yeah. the next design exactly. review. Okay. okay, so let us move on to administrative updates. Okay, so um, administrative updates and minor works. Um, the guidelines for flood ap adaptation grant application update. So uh, with that one, there's actually been no change in the last two weeks. Um, we're still, there we go. Um, we're can still preparing the grant application. So. Can, can I make an, or ask a question, make another suggestion there? It, it strikes me that that's a lot of money to be spent and that it's a lot of time to get a, a consultant, et cetera. And, and the guidelines that I read material from the National Park Service and SHPO didn't seem to be to be rocket science. 
it seemed to me, and I would be willing to do it, to take that material and translate it into a guideline that we could use. And you could go over and critique and, and, uh, and we could get on with it. We could get Shippo's input, we could get a lot of people's input, but waiting a year for a consultant to deal with this mm -hmm. and spending that amount of money sounds like a waste to me. Well, why don't you do that since you volunteered? I'd, I'd be happy to do it. <laughs> we'll give you that assignment. And I'll do it in less than a year. Okay, less than a year. You get jump, it happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, 11, 11 well, months and three days. No, a month or two I'll have. Well, okay. um, I'm uh, just, I, I don't want to rain on your parade. Yeah. But uh, the, um, the vision for the project was to actually include a lot of public uh, input, oh, which would, uh, I, was, I was envisioning we were going to have several uh, public workshops or presentations of some kind in maybe various locations, uh, various evenings, days, et cetera. Um, so um, if, if that's still possible, you know, under this scenario, sure. then I, I can I see that work. Still, the, the, still, the, yeah. the, 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 main, the main reason, I mean, I would have volunteered myself as well, uh, but uh, our workload is not possible to do that, and that's why we're going, we went forward with the idea for a consultant to do this. Um, so, um, uh, but, uh, you know, I suppose... Well, I don't know why we can't do both. Yeah, and, and even with a consultant, there was going to be a certain amount of additional work on my part anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could just consider James the consultant and move forward. Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, there is a deadline for the, uh, for the uh, grant application, so we need to make sure that uh, we're going to get what we want uh, and, and, and maybe uh, once we get farther into it with more detail, which I guess you and I would have to yeah. do and, and meet and hash through, uh, is that one, maybe we need more volunteers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or uh, we discover, you know, this is o way over our head more than we thought. Um, so um, I, I think I heard that um, Beaufort uh, has recently uh, done a similar kind of thing. Uh, for their guidelines, uh, but I'm not sure yet if they have um, used the November guidelines uh, as, or yeah, they call them guidelines too. Okay. <laughs> the November guidelines in their process, or if they were already doing it before that came out, and, and were pretty much done by the time that came out. So, I guess I can find that out and find out what their process was and et cetera. So. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so that Okay, so we'll let the two of you all get together yeah. Yeah. And, and come back and report to right. us. Right, and okay. I have to submit my budget request by Friday. Well, I don't, think, <laughs> I don't, I, well, I don't I, think these are necessarily one replacing the other. No. Right, right. Um, in other oh, words, okay. I, I kind of think we should go ahead as planned and, and seek the funding for the consultant. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't hurt us to, as a group, get organized and say, this is what we think we need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so that yeah, we've that, got a real good starting point good when the consultant gets Yeah, so we can show here. it to the consultant um, and say, this is what we're, we've come up with so far. Right, or, or we may not get the grant. Yeah. So oh, or we may not get the grant, in which right. case we'll do it the hard way. Yeah, but, right. Um, yeah. uh, right. I like that. So, yeah, don't, don't, don't withdraw your, no. don't, don't change your budgeting. No. Okay. <laughs> it's All done, right? right? Yeah. No, don't, don't change it. Okay. Okay, what about 715 East, East Front Street? So 715 East Front Street, uh, dang it. Uh, I took all these pictures and created the document and I didn't bring it. Um, so anyway, uh, you may have all already looked, driven by and seen the uh, building. The roof is gone. Yes, right? I have. Uh, and now even the chimney is gone. So, um, the original documents, um, as I mentioned, um, yeah, and I sketched on the whiteboard, remember? Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, <coughs> the contractor assures me that, yes, they knew exactly the, the fact that they were going to have to replace certain blocks uh, with sharp corners in order to infill and remove certain blocks and add ones with rounded corners. They knew all this ahead of time. Uh, and they are still planning on doing that. Uh, the same with the brick sills are be 
you know, recreate it above. So in the end, um, it will, it, according to his uh, uh, description, it will look the same. It just won't be the original uh, materials. So, um, which is kind of antithetical to the whole to historic preservation yep. uh, as opposed to historic appearance. Uh, so, um, but he did not realize all that before he did all that. So, um, he is in fact even going to be rebuilding the chimney, even though there will be no fireplace, and he'll be using it as a flue. So, um, so that all said, um, he has voluntarily stopped work, uh, and it will be coming to the design review meeting uh, with his presentation, and then hopefully, and will therefore be applying for a revision to the previous approval. So, Good. So okay. that's the, the latest. We have not done a formal stop work order because I've been checking every day as I leave home, I go around that way. <laughs> and make sure they haven't done, changed anything or done anything. <coughs> They're busy working on raising those other houses, I think, with the okay. same contractor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but anyway, he's busy doing other work, uh, so he's fine with not having to work on that one. Okay, so you're gonna put him in his next design review? Yep. Okay, yep. all right, that'll be fine. So, okay, demolition right. by neglect updates, we need to form a committee? Yes. So we mentioned that last time. Yes, we did. But we, we don't do have it. a committee. <laughs> so let's do it. So is anybody anybody on here was on the committee before? So I, I guess you. I guess one of you is going to be head of that committee. Oh. <laughs> that needs to be there changed. it goes. There's the <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're wishing you had my job. <laughs> uh, Ruth, you eat like my past. <laughs> So yes, James, I was on the committee. So, so James is going to be head of that committee. I'll keep him company. I, and th I, thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. And hey, look, we got a volunteer to be yeah. on the committee right here. Look, we got a volunteer. And we I think Peggy just back said. Back there you go. There's our okay. committee right there. Those three people are. All right. right. Well, I, I I would like this to. I don't. I don't. Know, just in case, I'd like it to be formalized. You know, nominate people I'm and then. Yeah, and then and then motion, make a motion and second and all that stuff. Okay. okay. Go ahead. So we've got these three people uh, nominated. Any, would anybody else like to be nominated for the committee? No, no, anybody want to nominate somebody else for the committee? I, I, move, <laughs> I move we close the nominations. <laughs> Is there a second to that? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. So the nominations are closed. <laughs> So, so, I, so I make a motion that we approve this committee yes, yeah. for the demolition by neglect committee. These three people with uh, perhaps I should do that for you. <laughs> Since you're chair, you think so? Well, you're not supposed to make motions. Okay. So what Madam Chair wanted me to say was I I, I make a motion that the uh, nomination slate that has just been approved be appointed to the uh, demolition. Prevention of Demolition by Neglect Committee. And I think those three people were Peggy, James, and Joe. Yep. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Every, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? None. So we now have a committee. Thank you very much for your services. Yes. And I'll look and see if I can come up with the old dump. Report that we have. I think I have David one. They have some stuff yeah. too. Now I'll, I'll look because I've been going through some stuff, but I'll because okay. it was on I, Excel or something. Yeah, so as far as I've Excel. seen so far, is basically just individual files on some of the yeah. projects, but they're here, there, and everywhere in the office. So um, um, give me well, give me about a week. But I think we also do have them on on our computer on our central our share shared computer system that we have some files there as well. Okay, well, I so. think Morgan had put it in an Excel file. I, I know it was an Excel file. Oh, yes. File. It was an Excel file. It's an Excel file, yeah. so let me let me go through some stuff. And yes, I'll, I'll that put, sounds great. Okay, I'll try to have it at the next design review. If not, before okay. then, I'll e if okay. I find it before then, I'll email it to you. Are you so. available to come by the office during the weekday at all? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
I think next week I'm actually I'm clear all next week. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything okay. next week. Okay. I'm available. So right. there is no general public left, so there is no general public comments. So do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There is no one opposing. We are adjourned. <laughs> yes, ma'am.